Hello friends, welcome back to The Way I Line as we continue a series that we simply titled Basics. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how many times I can move my hands in the world so just pop up, bam, 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 pop, 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 pow. No, I'm just kidding. But we are continuing our series called Basics, talking about the basics of our faith and what it means. We've been in the last few weeks talking about this big word, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about the Son, which was Jesus. Today we get to talk about God the Holy Spirit. And so many, so many times uh, as believers or as new Christians or, or new believers, we think the Holy Spirit has this weird context to it. Uh, some, some say he's a ghost. Some say he's a separate entity altogether in this kind of uh, like eerie kind of special superpower, like speaking in tongues and all that stuff freaks people out. But I don't want any part of that. But the Holy Spirit isn't spooky. The Holy Spirit isn't weird. The Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity, just like the Father and the Son, right? It's a person. It's not a thing. It's not an attribute. It's not an identity. It's not a, it's not a um, second personality. The Holy Spirit is a person, right? And it says in John, uh, it says in John 14, verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. That's really important. Verse 17. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives within you and will be in you. So when Jesus was on this earth and he came and he ascended into heaven, he left us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to walk through with us. The Holy Spirit, again, is a person. It's not a thing or something spooky or creepy. It's actually a, another person of the Trinity to help you and I move through this life. Pastor Alex, break that down. So as we read in the scripture, this is actually Jesus talking to his disciples. He wants them to understand that uh, as he's about to leave the earth, uh, he wants them to know, look, you're not going to be left alone. I'm actually going to leave somebody with you, and this uh, somebody is still God. It's uh, this is somebody is called the Holy Spirit, and so He wants them to understand that uh, they're not going to be left alone, and that they actually still will have a, a portion of Him basically with them. And so He uh, He He then uh, then also continues to give them the understanding of what the Holy Spirit is going to do. For them, And so throughout the chapter of John 14 and a few chapters later in, in that same book, he actually goes through and talks about the roles that the Spirit will play in our life. Because again, as that scripture said, he lives within us. Yeah. So what does he do with us? Number one, salvation. God made the plan. God the Father made the plan. Jesus made the way, but the Holy Spirit is the one that brings us to this place of salvation. Mm. The point of it's the point of actually believing that Christ is our Lord and declaring it. That's what 1 Corinthians 12 3 says. That the Holy Spirit is the one that enables us to believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And so we see that the Holy Spirit is the one that worked within us to actually come to that point of yeah. belief. The recognition. The yeah. recognition, right. Next is the conviction. And John 16, 8, it talks about that. It says that, that the Spirit will prove the world wrong about sin. See, the Spirit is kind of like our conscience, right? Jiminy it's, Cricket. Jiminy Cricket. Right? Let your conscience be your guide. Right? Yeah. And so uh, he he's basically kind of like our conscience where he's telling us, you know, this is right, this is wrong, or making us feel a certain way like, oh, man, I don't feel right about this. He actually makes us more aware of when something is not right. And all of a sudden, when we come to salvation, we go, oh, I don't feel like I should have done that. Well, that was the Holy Spirit speaking. And see, the Holy Spirit's job is to convict us of our sin, to help us be, uh, become more and more like Christ. And so as you grow in your relationship with God, you begin to become more like Jesus. And that's why Galatians chapter 5 talks about the idea of walking in the Spirit. Mm. Galatians 5, 16 and 22 says 16. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And in verse 22 and 23 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And see, we see that as we grow in God, we be, because we're walking by the Spirit, yeah. these fruit that is talked about here, the fruit of the Spirit, is actually what begins to come out of our life. Mm. And it's because the Spirit enables us to be like that. It's not because we force ourselves to be patient, or we force ourselves to have peace, or we force ourselves to have self-control. No, it's because mm. we grow in our relationship with God that the Holy Spirit enables us to have these things begin to show. That's right. 
And so that's important that the Spirit is the one that begins to shape us more and more mm -hmm. like Christ. And then the last thing he does for us, so there's more, but the, the last major thing he does for us is he gives us power. Acts 1.8 talks about that same idea, that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And Jesus says we'll be his witnesses. Yep. See, through the Spirit, we receive power. But why do we receive power? It's so that we can actually preach the gospel. Yep. And I say this a lot to, to students I teach and everything. I say, all of us are called to preach, but not all of us will be called to preach on the stage. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Some of us may be called just to talk to our friends about who Jesus is in our life. Some of us may be called to talk to, as we grow up, you know, our coworkers or whatever else. We may be called to talk to other people, but you know what? We may never be called to a stage, but that doesn't mean you're not called to preach the gospel. You are still called to preach the gospel, and the Spirit is the one that enables us to do that same thing. Yep. And so with the Spirit, we see that we receive salvation. We receive a, a conviction and the ability to become more like Christ. And we also receive the power so that we know that we can continue doing the work call, God's called us to do. Yep. The Holy Spirit, the Trinity is, would not be the Trinity without the Holy Spirit. It is an essential part of the three persons of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Again, because the Spirit made a way for us to be empowered and enlighten us to salvation. Yeah. It convicts us, which means it tells us when we're doing something wrong. Right? If we didn't have that, we would just be at the own whim of what we ever thought was right, but that's not what we're supposed to do. And the last, it gives us the power. The power for you to go onto your high school campus, to go to your friends, to go to your family who are unsaved, and, and be Jesus and, and talk about who Jesus is, give you the supernatural power that comes with them. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for hanging out this morning. We love you so much. We're praying for you. We can't wait to be with you. Have a great day.